this Christmas. Choose food with the Board B quality mark for the highest standards, verified at every stage. Hello and welcome to Nevin's Kilkenny Christmas. I'm here because the city and the county won this year's Foodie Destination Award, and that's as good a reason as any to come to the city. I'm standing in front of Kilkenny Castle, and the OPW has generously allowed me to film in the castle's old kitchen, which is now a coffee shop. And over the next two programmes, there's gonna be a lot of food. The traditional favourites, of course, but some new recipes as well, including a chocolate alternative to plum pudding. But let's begin with two stars that are easy to prepare and which are both very stylish, perfect for Christmas entertaining. The first thing my starters I'm going to make for you is my smoked trout pate, and it's really easy. And you can make this ahead of time and serve it with some crispy bread, you know, some brown bread. So I'm using a local producer outside Kilkenny, Goatsbridge Trout Farm, and this is the cold and the hot smoked trout. We've chopped a little bit of the cold and also the hot smoked, so we're going to stir that in afterwards. This goes into the food processor. So this is the hot smoked one here, and then the cold one. Some cream cheese, Philadelphia mascarpone, they'll all work beautiful. And then we're going to blend this. I just love the colour of that. Just look at it. It's gorgeous. You have a tiny little bit of texture, but we want a little bit more. The hot and cold smoked, so just stir that through. And then we're going to get lots of lovely flavours. So some lovely herbs, first of all. Dill works really well. Parsley, chives, any of those will work beautiful. So I'll grab some chives here. And then I'm going to grab some lovely dill. So dill, bronze, fennel, all that. So if you ever pickle anything with vinegar or sugar, dill is really, really good. It works really well with fish. So using your knife, just stir that through into the bowl. And then some chives. So there's lovely color, nice texture. Scoop it in. And then we're gonna put a little bit of some lemon zest. Now you can use some lime, which work well, but lemon will be beautiful in this. I love the smell of lemon, and it works really well with the smoked trout. So then you just stir everything through, just using a spatula or a spoon. And first of all, look at the colour. So that will keep in your fridge for a couple of days. Serve it with brown bread, crackers, anything like that, delicious. We're going to serve this up. So you can have this as a starter. A little bit of sourdough bread, just drizzle it with some rapeseed oil or olive oil and just in a griddle pan. This is the kind of dish that you can present in the middle of the table, let everyone help themselves. And it's just very informal and that's what Christmas should be all about that you're not stuck in the kitchen all day cooking, that you're there with your guests. How easy is that? Put the lid on it, hand it around, serve it and enjoy. The next starter is my duck salad. With this, there's a couple of little tricks. First of all, doing some vegetable crisps, gonna make a lovely dressing. So there's a lot of lovely little recipes for you. We're gonna use some parsnip and we're gonna use some carrot and we're going to deep fry them. Just get a little sprig of herb, a little bit of coriander and then just drop it in. And can you hear that beginning to crackle? That's a sign that it's hot enough. Using a potato peeler, I have the carrots peeled already. The reason why I'm using the potato peeler is that every single slice will be the same thickness. That's exactly what we want. So we use carrots, you can use celeriac, some beetroot, that should be enough. And then parsnips, and I love parsnips. Some parsnips are delicious in a soup with a little bit of honey, thyme and stock, and you can roast them. So now we're gonna crisp them up, very careful. So don't crowd the wok or a sauce, but it doesn't matter really what you use, as long as it's nice and hot. On their own, they're delicious and they can be made ahead. So the key to this is to keep moving them, just with your slotted spoon. You can toss them in flour, but you know, they're nice just as they are, with a little bit of sea salt and just crispy fried. You can also do them in the oven, but this is far quicker. Now you can see the parsnips changing really quickly. So, kitchen paper. Keep these in an airtight container and they'll happily keep for a few days. So you can have them done ahead. If they get a little bit soft, pop them into the oven. Two or three minutes just to crisp them up. This salad is full of flavour and texture. A little touch of sea salt. And even them, just as a little nibble, they're gorgeous. Nice and crispy. My favourite is the parsnip. I think they're just delicious. So, going to make our dressing. And this is a really good dressing. And make this ahead. We're using another local product from Kilkenny. And it's a high bank orchard. And this is organic apple syrup. Nice drizzle of this. We're gonna get a nice little bit of tartness and sweetness too. This is a beautiful syrup. Then a touch of balsamic vinegar, or you can use cider vinegar. And this is a really nice one, it's a 12 year old. So it's a really beautiful one. So now my soya sauce. And this is a ketchup manis. It's a sweet Indonesian soya sauce. So it's low in salt, but beautiful. Some sesame seeds, you can toast them. If you want to on a dry pan. 
and then for a lovely bit of kick, some root ginger, and just grate a little touch of this. Now you can crush garlic into this, use some sesame oil, but I'm gonna use some lovely local rapeseed oil. So this dressing will keep happily for easily up to a week ahead. Nice drizzle of this. Pinch of salt, and a little bit of black pepper. Now you could put some lime zest and juice into that. So you can just do that. Mix it all together. So it's like an emulsion. If you want to loosen it up, I, I like it like that. Tablespoon or maybe less of cold water. We'll just loosen that up. And that's it. Now, the mango. So just use a nice serrated edge knife. I have more than enough here. Slice this into nice long slices. Nice and thin. So you can have this done even the night before, either for a starter or you're having friends around. It's gorgeous. The duck is in the oven. It's one of my favorite ingredients is duck. And this is duck confit, already cooked. Duck legs, and all I did on a pan, a little bit of oil and butter, put it down for about two minutes on the skin side and then on the flesh side, and then finished it off in the oven. Put it onto parchment paper, and then you have the most beautiful look. This is all cooked and crispy skin. Now you could brush this with honey or even some of the apple syrup if you want to, but I think there's enough flavor going on there. The oven was about 180, good hot pan for about two or three minutes either side. So it's still cold in the center into the oven, so it's warm through. We're ready to serve up. A little bit of cause baby gems. So just arrange this just around the plate like that. Now, for our mango, cut it at an angle. Now you can shred the duck, but I'm actually gonna serve the duck leg whole. So that's enough mango. Now our duck, we'll just get this nice one here. It's warm through. You're probably thinking that's a really big starter, and you're right, it is a generous, very generous starter. Pomegranate seeds, and this is gonna give lovely color. We have a few little edible flowers. So this color, this flavor, and you can see the lovely crispy duck. Dress always at the last moment even though you can have it made ahead. So for my dressing, we have the apple syrup, we have the balsamic vinegar, the rapeseed oil, a touch of ginger, sesame seeds, and the soy sauce, and salt and pepper. Some crispy vegetables, give lovely height, different kind of textures, that kind of thing, and they look great. Just to finish it, a little bit of fresh coriander. It's not essential, but it works really well with this dish. So I'm just gonna arrange this. And there are two very delicious, and I think really, really special starters. That is the smoked trout pate, and my crispy duck salad, with the mango and the crispy vegetables. Kilkenny Castle is open all year round and is very popular with visitors, but it becomes a special place at Christmas when a number of events take place here during the city's annual Yule Fest. The Butler family lived here for over 500 years and the castle has been restored to how it would have looked in late Victorian times. The dinner service on the table was used by the Butler family when the British royal family stayed at the castle in 1899 and 1904. After a very formal lunch or dinner, guests of the castle would have been brought here to admire the family's collection of 17th century tapestries. These woven works of art are not just decorative and designed to impress, they also provided insulation from the castle's coal walls. Upstairs, the Victorian nursery is a world away from the formal reception rooms of the castle. And it's not hard to imagine the children being excited as they looked forward to Christmas. I'm on my way to see Adrian Cummins, Chief Executive of the Restaurants Association of Ireland, to learn more about the foodie destination of Ireland Awards. We're meeting in Cakeface, an amazing patisserie and coffee shop close to St. Canice's Cathedral. Adrian, it's great to see you. Great to see you, Nevin. Uh, Adrian, tell me about Ireland's Foodie Destination Awards. Well, Ireland's Foodie Destination Awards is the brainchild of the Restaurant Association of Ireland. We established it nearly six years ago, and uh, this year Kilkenny is the proud winner of the 2018 Foodie Destination of Ireland. Now, what does it take to be a winner? Well, it takes community involvement. You need uh, businesses like this great business here and many, many more in a community, a region, a town or a destination to come together, work together to put that region or town or community on the, on the map of Ireland as a foodie destination. How many people entered the competition this year? This year we had 30 applications from all over Ireland, north and south. It's an all-island uh, competition. Uh, we had three nominations from uh, three destinations in the north of Ireland that was shortlisted, along with seven more in the south. So it has a huge impact for whatever town wins. It's a massive impact for a local uh, destination. And Kilkenny shows that the, uh, a region like this, who has been in the top five for the last three years, okay. uh, they've been building strength on strength year on year over the last three years. It shows the local involvement by the county council uh, who have 
brought the local businesses together. Uh, in this region, you have two fantastic Michelin star restaurants. You have great businesses like the business that we're in here today. Cake face, yeah. Great local produce uh, sourced locally. Uh, great involvement with the local producers. Uh, and that's what we're looking for. It's a, truly a local competition on a national stage. So it's all about working together, the food, the producers, you know, the businesses. Working together for the betterment of their local community. Well, I can definitely see why they deserve to win it. There's something very special happening in this city. And thanks for coming down to chat to me. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. This Christmas, choose food with the Board B Equality Mark for the highest standards, verified at every stage. This Christmas, choose food with the Board B Equality Mark for the highest standards, verified at every stage. No matter how many times people have cooked the turkey, they like to be reminded how to cook it. There are lots of lovely tips. Especially at Christmas, some people might be cooking turkey for the first time. For me, I treat it like a large chicken. And it's actually very, very simple. So I have it cooked here. I'm gonna take it out. Wow, oh, it smells good. So, key tips, first of all, get the best quality turkey. And the quality assured Irish turkey is fantastic. So what we do is bring it to room temperature for about 20 minutes. Then what I did was melt some butter and I put lots of lovely herbs. Now I like sage, thyme, rosemary and parsley and chop them as fine as you can. Add them into the melted butter. And I think what works really well with the turkey is a little bit of orange and lemon zest into the butter. So you're making an infused butter. Now you can add garlic or ginger or something like that, but I'm keeping it very simple and delicious. So it's really important with the butter that you infuse it. So you gently warm it, and then you're getting the flavor of the lemon and the orange zest and the herbs. And then you brush that all over the turkey and that will give it really, really keep it lovely and moist, give beautiful flavor coming through into the turkey meat. In the tray, I put some root vegetables, carrot and also some red onion, but you could use lots of other vegetables, leeks, garlic, that kind of thing will work delicious and they'll give beautiful flavor. Then I put a tray, so that's the trivet, so the turkey will sit on the trivet and into the cavity of the turkey, what I have is an orange which I've just cut in half and that's the same orange and lemon that we took the zest of, so there's no waste. Lots of lovely fresh thyme, you could use sage, you could use rosemary, this is gonna flavor the turkey. And I like to put the stuffing into the neck of the actual bird. So I'm gonna show you how to make the stuffing now in a few minutes, it's absolutely delicious. That will absorb all the beautiful juices that comes out from the turkey into your stuffing. So after you've stuffed the turkey, make sure to wash your hands. For the melted butter, what I use is a pastry brush all over the breast, the wings, the legs, into the cavities. That's going to really flavor the meat. When that's done, some salt and pepper, and then the last thing is some streaky bacon overlap on the breast of the turkey because the breast of the turkey is the leanest part. So that's the part that will dry out really, really quickly. And that will give the most beautiful flavor into your turkey, but also into your gravy. So that's a streaky rasher, which is smoked. Next, I drizzle some lovely local rapeseed oil. Be generous all over the breast and the legs of the turkey. Then what I do is I pour a jug of cold water just into the tray and that's gonna help for my gravy juices. Two sheets of tin foil goes on top of the turkey and this bird here is just a little bit over five kilo and it takes about four hours there approximately, 20 minutes per pound. So every oven is different. So we started at 180 degrees and that's in a fan oven. The most important thing is to keep basting. So what I regularly do is take the tray out, get a spoon and then just literally spoon the juices over the breast and over the leg. That keeps it really, really moist. If the water evaporates, add more water in or you can use a little bit of chicken stock. So the more times you can do that, I'd recommend you do that every 30, 40 minutes when you're cooking the turkey. And then for the last maybe hour and a half, take the tin foil off. If it's brown and too much, don't panic. You just simply cover the bird again with the tin foil and that will stop it. So as you can see, this is it. We need to let it rest. If I serve this now, all the juices are gonna run out when you carve it. So just be really careful with this. Lift it, put it onto your serving platter. Tin foil. We don't want it going cold. There's just two layers here. I'm just gonna completely press that right in there. Now all our lovely juices. So there's roast garlic, and I actually kept the skin of the roast garlic. And we're gonna strain that. The flavor in there is delicious. Knock that back. Mm, they've kind of caramelized to the have, which is delicious. Madeira is a fortified wine. 
and it's really delicious in gravy. So even if you're making a beef gravy, it's gorgeous, or even for lamb. I'm gonna bring that to the boil and just let that just reduce down. So this is our red cabbage, which is really, really thinly sliced. A great gadget to have around the kitchen is a Japanese mandolin. You can see how thin you slice this. So a little bit of rapeseed oil. I'm a big fan of that. It's a really nice oil to cook with. And we're gonna put in some red onion into this. We just peeled it and just sliced it nice and thinly. This is gonna go into the pan. I'm just gonna put the little root there. Red onion will give lovely sweetness. Wonderful thing about this red cabbage, not alone does it keep it, it works so well. You know, with the turkey, even your bacon loin, anything like that, goose or duck, it's delicious. This is about a quarter of a large red cabbage. So I'm just gonna pop that in. So spices. There's a little bit of ground ginger, ground cinnamon, ground cloves, and then there's a little bit of mixed spice. So we're gonna sprinkle this all over here. When you get the smells of this, it's going to be really Christmassy. For sharpness, a lovely little bit of red wine vinegar. It's gonna be a little bit noisy. For sweetness, some red currant jelly. So I'm gonna put a large spoonful in here, maybe another little bit. I'm gonna cover it with some pomegranate juice and then some red wine. So a nice good slug of the red wine. And we're gonna stir this through. So this needs to come to the boil. And you're probably thinking it looks very watery. Trust me, this is gonna cook out. If it goes a little bit dry, don't panic. Put more of the juice or more of the red wine. We're gonna put in some apple, and this is just a Bramley apple. Now we're gonna grate it like we grate cheese. My gravy juice is simmering away, and it's gonna cook out the Madeira. And when this cooks out, you won't even think there's apple there. So I'm just gonna put half the apple in there. So dried cranberries, these are delicious, even in cookies and that. I always have some of these, even over porridge. So let that cook out, put the lid on this, and I have some done here. It's cooked out really, really nice. And the most important thing is that it's not in any way mushy. I'm just gonna taste this. It's not undercooked, and that's exactly what I want. So now for the stuffing. Lots of butter. I'm a big fan of the butter, so I'm gonna melt that there, just in a pan. Sprinkle in your onion, just a regular chopped onion. That's just one small one. And just stir through the butter. Now, if you don't want to use all the butter, you can use half the butter and a little bit of stock. Into this, we're putting cranberries and the dried cranberries again. Don't use the fresh cranberries. They'll bleed and they won't be very nice. And if you make soda bread at home, dried cranberries are lovely with a little bit of chopped rosemary. So try that. Now, we're going to put in some nice herbs. Sage. So I'm going to chop this lovely fresh sage. Fresh thyme. I just think it's one of the nicest herbs. If you're roasting the chicken or anything like that, it works really, really delicious. So lots of that. Okay. Roll this all up. Cut this nice and small. Hole in the knife, over and back. So really sage is gonna be the predominant herb in this. We're just gonna put that in. So you have your onion finely diced, your cranberry, mmm, smells great. And then we're gonna put in our breadcrumbs and then we're gonna stir this into our sausage meat. So these are just some white breadcrumbs. And that's gonna mop up all those lovely butter juices. And even without the sausage meat, like how nice does that look? That's delicious. So if you just wanted to serve this as it is with no sausage meat, what I would suggest is toast some pine nuts and put some pine nuts in there. Gorgeous. This is some good quality sausage meat. The easiest way I think to mix this is just with the spoon. So this is the sausage meat and we're just gonna work this through here. So I find the easiest way, obviously with a spoon, but a big bowl, because then you can just mix the sausage meat through it. So this is the stuffing ready and this is the same stuffing that I stuffed the turkey and I stuffed the neck of the turkey. We're just gonna finish the gravy. I like to enrich it just with a little splash of cream with a tablespoon. And it kind of lightens it, to be honest with you. Changes the color slightly. A little touch of salt and some pepper. I can just get those beautiful aromas. So if you just give me a minute, I'm gonna tidy up and then we're ready to serve. I think it's always good to be organized and tidy up before you serve up, because this is the busy time. So, what I'm gonna serve with this is some roast potatoes and some glazed carrots. I've got some rooster potatoes, I peel them, and I steam them, and I par cook them. And just as they were quarter way cooked, I drained them, and I kind of bashed them against the side of the saucepan. Then I drizzled some beef dripping, rosemary, garlic, and that's it, and in the oven for about 45 minutes. And then with the garlic, what I've done is just simply cut it in half, and it's roasted. It's sweet. All I did with the carrots was cut the baby carrots in half and some parsnips, steam them for three or four minutes, drizzle them with a little bit of butter, a little bit of maple syrup or honey, and then some star anise and cinnamon. So a little bit of thyme, and also we have some lovely fresh sage into the cavities like that. Red cabbage. I just like to do a family serving and let people help themselves. And for a lovely little bit of festive flavor or touch, some pomegranate seeds on top. And then for our gravy, Madeira is cooked out, and the main ingredient here is the lovely juices from the actual turkey. Lightens it the cream, the color too. Now, if you've cooked turkey many, many times, 
I hope you've got lots of tips. But if it's your first time cooking turkey, I hope you try this recipe and good luck and enjoy. After a long day in the kitchen, I'm going to the Hole in the Wall, Kilkenny's oldest and smallest bar, owned by cardiologist Michael Conway. Hello, Michael. How are you? This welcome, is a, welcome. a lovely, cosy place. Thank you very much. But not the easiest to find, I have to say. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> common complaint, common complaint. The, uh, you know, the reality is we're in a house built 1582, which is the inner house of the Tudor era mansions hidden away from the street. It's got so much character. This is a very unusual place because there are very few places in Ireland that survive from the 1580s. In the 1700s, it became one of the taverns in Ireland. And particularly in the 1790s, it was a place where the Earl of Ormond, John Butler, was here so much he was known as Jack of the Castle. As a result of that, all the aristocrats used to come in then, you see, and all the top people would be drinking here. And then they made a hole in the wall out back. So these people then would be able to come in quietly past the church. So the assumption would probably have been made, oh, they're going for, for, for prayer. <laughs> but actually, they were coming in here to, you know, take... <laughs> and like, uh, Michael, you're renowned for your Irish coffee here. Yes, we've actually focused on it in a big way over the last year or two. Irish coffee was something that was invented in Foynes in County Limerick um, at the time of the flying boats. I figured that I'd call my Irish coffee Nashana Irish coffee as a result, being from Limerick. And not only have we devised a version where we use standard Irish whiskies, but of late we're testing it out using pochine. There's a local pochine now made, Ballykeith, and um, would you like to... I'd love to, yeah, yeah. this would be something different. <laughs> so firstly, I'll show you what we do, and maybe it'll, it'll end up happening in black light. Maybe, you never, I, know. never know. So we'll put okay. in a little uh, coffee. It's this really is Arabica important. coffee, organic, mm -hmm. McCabe's from Newtown, Montana. I know that, really good. Would that be yeah. one shot you're putting in there? I'm just putting one, yeah. one double espresso shot. And then basically, we'll just put in some sugar. I ask whoever asked for uh, coffee how much sugar they'd like. Personally, a bit of a sweet tooth, so I go for about one and a half myself. And so, always brown sugar, is it? Always brown sugar. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, very uh, oily brown sugar from the Caribbean. Once we've done that, then we add in our pochine. Okay. Now, we could use a measure, but maybe not. Uh, <laughs> maybe just, not. Uh, how much would you like? I have a bit of work to do, so. Okay, <laughs> so we'll just go gently. With yeah, this me. is Ishka Baha, of course, you know, this water of life in so many ways. So then the next stage, then, is just to put in some hot water. Mm -hmm. So generally we'll go then to the uh, coffee machine and just top it up with, with uh, water. So this will be our strategy. And then the next phase of it is to put the cream on it. So what we do is basically shake the cream. And that makes it a bit more... Thicker, thicker maybe? Yeah, yeah, a bit yeah. thicker. And that's just whipping cream you're using for this? Just, that's all. Look at the way. as you can see then, it doesn't really sink or die. Yeah. So the next phase of it then is to put the label on it. And the joke here, I being a cardiologist, and generally what we do is put a heart. A heart? On ah. top. Just with cocoa butter? Just cocoa, yeah. And Michael, we're using the pochine, but you have lots of other local yes, beers Nevin, that you're brewing yeah. in Kilkenny, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, there are lots huge... of other options. The original of the species, I suppose, is Smithix. In fact, originally, before it was Smithix, was O'Sullivan's. And now people, thanks to the Smithix family, are making a, an O'Sullivan's beer here in Kilkenny. Ballykeith also have a gin, very, very nice gin. The High Bank Orchard gins. And High Bank also produce these beautiful ciders. There's a medieval cider and a proper cider. Also, locally, we have Ger Costello, who's making um, ales. We have some of that on tap here. There's quite a range of local Fantastic, drinks. Now, beautiful. all in moderation. That's delicious. Okay. That is so good. Well Michael, thank you so much. Well, thanks for coming. And a very Merry Christmas. And same to you. In the next programme, I'll be cooking a glazed loin of bacon, coleslaw with turkey and ham, butterfly leg of lamb, and a chocolatey alternative to the Christmas pudding. I hope you'll join me.
This Christmas, choose food with the Board B quality mark for the highest standards, verified at every stage.